She's also the president of Farm Africa Solidarité, an organization based in Switzerland, a co-chair of the World Economic Forum on Africa. Binetta has also been listed as one of the 100 most influential people in the world by the Time magazine, that was in 2011. Sitting right next to her is Ashish Taka, who is the founder and managing director of Mara Group. He's been recognized by the World Economic Forum as a young global leader. Ashish is a serial entrepreneur who founded his first business, Mara, in 1996 at the age of 15 with a 5,000 US dollar loan. And since then has driven the growth of his company from a small IT business in Uganda to the globally recognized multi-sector investment group that exists today. Well, Ashish is wearing the Nigerian flag, and probably so. He's, he tells me that he's at home here. Ashish, you're welcome again. Zamantuwa Humalo is the co-founder of Africa Unleashed, an organization based in South Africa. She is a global shaper and has recently started an angel investment company aimed at investing in businesses run by women. Well, Ms. Kumalo has also represented South Africa in a number of international conferences and has spoken at the United Nations. You're welcome. Beside her is Essie Clayland, who is Chief Executive Officer of Afrochic Ghana. I believe she's wearing one of her creations. A global shaper, Essie has also built one of the most widely read blogs in her country. She has interests in building African brands and learning how to develop people and places. And sitting right next to me is Kola Karim. Well, he is the Group Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, Shoreline Energy International. He heads the board of a number of companies, among them Costing, West Africa, and Nigerian Ropes. Well, Kola is a young global leader alumnus and a lover of sports. Chief among which I can safely say is Nigeria's favorite football. Kola, you're welcome. And there's also you, members of our audience, and those of you watching us from uh, your homes, because th we're hoping that this will be as highly interactive as possible. You can follow us on Twitter or just use the hashtag Africa Youth. While we were in the holding room, I asked them, I told them that I'm going to ask them the very first question. Uh, do they believe, do the panelists here believe, that Africa's youth have taken their, their own uh, destiny into their own hands and are shaping their future? Kola, I'm going to start with you. Thank you. Um, Africa's youth has done something radical. Um, the last 20 years has shown a growth in Africa. You could correlate that to this generation of Africa. The reason is, compared to our father's generation, we have decided we want a different Africa to live in, to grow up in, and also to build a better life for ourselves. If you look at the history of what a lot of countries in Africa have come, where they've come from, from independence, a lot of these countries were handed over to people who were trained and educated by the colonial masters. So they were taught in a certain type of way to run a polity. Fast forward the last 10 years, where the growth on the continent has been humongous, you will realize the generation of Africans that's now driving it from what you said, looking at the age gap close up. 60% of the continent of Africa today, from the numbers, are under the age of 30. So if you see the radicalization of what is going to happen and is happening, it's transforming the continent, is the focus of the youth from areas of e-commerce, telecommunications. It's a different ballgame. And the main difference is this. We want a better continent. And because we know that, and we can see what's happening in the West, we want to implement, introduce, and bring that to our continent. That's the drive in the youth of Africa. So I take it that your answer is a yes. Essie, what about you? I uh, definitely agree with uh, Collis' um, uh, opinion, but I think not nearly enough. Um, so you see the bright spots. You see uh, uh, those of us that are really stepping up and, and, and wanting to shape the future. But I think um, 
that because of the, the particular challenges that we have, we need to dream really big. We need to um, carve out really bold solutions. And it's hard to dream big from nothing, right? The way that you, you get to the point where you're able to dream really big is that you, you start with small dreams. So maybe your, your first uh, small dream is you want to go to a particular high school and then you're able to go, and then you want to go to Harvard, and then you go, and then after that you think, oh, I, I can really um, achieve something. So you, 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 and you, you keep on doing that, climbing small mountains and, until you realize actually there are no limits. And so whatever world you want to see, you can create. And I think that um, possibly because of uh, some of our economic challenges, we're, not enough of us are dreaming even the small dreams mm -hmm. so that we can you know, be emboldened by our successes with the small dreams to get to the point where we are really looking around us and saying, you know, I want to conquer poverty or I want to bring clean water to Africa. Um, and, so, and so I would say not nearly enough. Um, but however, I think the successes that we're seeing, um, Kola is an example, Ashish, uh, you look at that and, and think, oh, well, if he can do that, maybe I can, I can also do that. So, um, You know, Mabba, when you asked us that question earlier, my immediate answer was, of course we are. Um, the fact that we're sitting with the World Economic Forum in Africa, and they thought it apt to have a session on young and restless. We're living in a continent that has a very huge youth population. Um, however, I think another dimension to it is, as much as we are shaping the Africa that we're living in, we're not doing enough. It's, it's good that, you know, here we are, we're young people and we're playing a huge role in shaping the communities that we're living in, but how many are there of us that are actually doing that? How many are there of us that are privileged enough to be sitting at this stage? So I think if anything, those of us, those of us who are privileged enough to have platforms like this need to be advocating for the other 199 you know, million. Because when you speak about you know, the statistic, for example, of um, you know, there being 200 million young uh, Africans who are between the ages of 18 and 24, I'm that face. I'm 24 years old. I'm probably the youngest person on this panel. And so the responsibility to me becomes, what am I doing to make sure that the other 200 million's voice is heard? And whatever it is that we're going to be doing coming out of here is going to impact them. And so I think the very few of us who have opportunities like this need to use them far better. And I think, I think we're doing that. I mean, this forum has 50 global shapers who come from different corners of this continent with the sole aim of doing just that. And if anything, we should be making this circle bigger. I mean, I found a trend that a lot of us tend to you know, roam in the same circles. We attend sort of similar conferences and you end up having conversations with the same young leaders. The circle needs to get bigger. So if anything, I'm challenging ourselves to make the circle bigger and challenging the older generation to allow for us to have that circle bigger. We have the numbers. And if anything, we shouldn't have to, for example, resort to valid means to having our causes heard. And so it becomes vital that as young leaders, we recognize the responsibility to have, not just to ourselves, but the Africa that we want to define and the Africa that we want to live in. Because we've got nowhere else to go. This is home. And so if we don't make it work, who will? I should you have a floor. I do. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to firstly say thank you to everybody for coming to Nigeria at, at this time. I think it's such a big statement to say that you know we're all we all believe in the country. We all believe in this, and together we're going to fight terrorism and pray that we do bring back our girls. So thank you to everybody for coming. Um, my opinion is, as the youth, I think we are taking it in our own hands as much as we can. But I think at the same time, there's another narrative to this. I mean, we have to be enabled. We have to be empowered and we have to be inspired. I think it's, it's not a one-way street. It's not a matter of us just taking it. It has to be offered. Do we snatch it? No, if we're, we're going to get criticized for snatching it. We're going to get criticized for not taking it. But it, there has to be a halfway house here. So I think our governments, um, our people, I mean, in general, there needs to be more done in this area where our voices do need to be heard, and I absolutely agree that the circle does need to be brought in. But at the same time, we need to be heard. We need to be, and we have, we have to have a seat at the table. But at the same time, there needs to be a halfway thing where we're willing to take it, we're willing to do as much as we can, but they have to be willing to give it as well. So my opinion's halfway. 
Renata, what's your perspective? Um, thank you. When I was invited, I said, my God, uh, uh, you know, I'm a young. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, so what I will, maybe I go to learn, you know, we, 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 because I like the company of the young people. My granddaughters are the one who tweet for me. Um, <laughs> You know, when I have this computer, my God, I don't understand this. So they will be the one to say, ah, may, let me tell you, mom, this is it, the way you do it. So I think it's always good to have the company of the, the young people, the, the new generation, who, who are building the future of our continent, the Africa we want. And um, you want it, and you have to be part of it. You know, um, the African Union, say that in the 50 years to come, I hope I will be still alive, but anyway,